What's up guys, HTG Prime back with some more LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. This is Forbidden Valley Free Room, which is part of the planet Pasana. It's like a Pasana up in here. <laughs> All right, we got a trophy achievement for completing this whole sector called Trailing Sectors. We're going to knock out 28 Kyber Bricks, which is actually split into two areas. It's kind of different than some other places. We also get three character tokens and a couple of ship tokens as well. Now, if you remember, we do have quick links down below in the video description. So if you're in a hurry or looking for something specific, those are highly recommendable. And so far, they've been pretty accurate. They're not always that way, but uh, usually you guys are pretty good about telling me. But you can see here, if you've been following along, we just got done with the Jundlin Wastes over on Tatooine. So we're going to knock on the old door right to the old west here, kind of northwest, actually, and go to Pasan. Look at that. Forbidden Valley, 28, 3, and 2. Let's go. All right, because this is a free roam video, we have shortened most of the travel time. As you can see, the X-Wing flying off into the sky there. But you might notice there's no, like, light speed travel. Now, that's kind of a thing we do around here. If you're new, that'll be surprising. <laughs> Look at my secondary character bouncing in the background there. I'm not sure why they give you access to him. And, and ironically, look, I was just Vader when I got onto the ship. And All right, so I know I mentioned that this area is split into two places as we mark our first target here, which happens to be a shooting gallery, and more on that in a second. But I just want to point out, there is actually a way to look on the map and see both sides. See, look at that view map. You can actually click on that, and it'll show the other side, which happens to be the Pasana Plains. So we're currently in the Forbidden Valley, and there's also the Forbidden, or I guess the Pasana Plains is what they call it. But uh, we'll get to that in a hot second. Now, back to the shooting gallery. Now, this the only reason why I targeted this is, if you guys remember, we do have a challenge for taking on all of the shooting galleries throughout the galaxy. And just to make things easy for my recording purposes, I put these first. Now, you're probably wondering, well, Brian, if you're just going to edit those and chop them all together in the end, what would it matter if you did it first or not? Well, that is a great question. I'm glad you asked. The reason is just because uh, we get to see me landing and choosing the, the, the planet and the area, right? And then I get here and then I go right to it. So it just sort of makes things easier. I won't have to chop as many things together later. All right, here we are, a powdery performance. It actually requires us to get 1,200 points or more. Now, as it turns out, you get 100 points for each of these targets, but these are a little bit different. They sort of launch them at you. It's almost like a game of lawn darts. I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember those, but they outlawed them because they were pretty dangerous. But they actually made some newer ones that have a flat surface that sort of resemble these. So instead of having a giant spike at the end of like a dart, right, and you yeet it up into the air and wait for it to come down and hopefully it didn't hit anybody and went right where it was supposed to, they changed them and made them a flat surface. And I think some of them are even magnetic now, but... I'm a little outdated on the outdoor sports games. As you guys know, I'm sort of a hermit. I don't get out much. But uh, you can see I got 1,100 points, plenty of time left. Uh, I do recommend using the old bounty hunter. I also recommend uh, aiming down sight and then letting go. So I'm letting go, and then as soon as I see a target close to my reticle, I actually lock in by zooming down or aiming down sight. And it on honestly, the auto-aim sort of locks on or at least sends a bolt or blaster bolt, that is, towards the target in question. Look at that, I nailed them all. Nailed it! All right, so we got them all done dead. We got 1,900, had plenty of extra. Got that cabin break for completing that and also checked off another one of our shooting galleries. Now we're gonna head over to the left side here and make our way. In fact, I should have probably grabbed that Kyber break there, but I wanted to take on this next. There's actually a couple of quests or puzzles that actually unlock other uh, missions or puzzles as well. So in this one, this one's called the Pasana Pantomime, and it is a requirement to unlock some of the later ones in this video. So it's important that you know that there is sort of an unlock progress now in this particular one it actually tells a story around the backside this guy here tells us each of the character names if you're in any kind of question however i've got a cheat sheet for you we're going to go ahead and just show you which ones are needed for each round basically it's a puppet show you need to put a puppet on each one of the i don't know the mallets if you will the, the puppeteering uh controls <laughs> and uh basically it's the first one on the left and the middle one on the right for the first round and basically just go talk to main buddy and the Aki Aki storyteller will go ahead and uh, let us know what's up there. And then, of course, uh, we're going to go to the far back one. I, I, I said it's the first left one, but it depends on how you count. So it's the middle, middle left one. It's the one that's closest to 
the left side. And then uh, same applies on the other one, right? It's kind of the same thing. No? No? Okay. Well, uh, anyways, follow along with what I do, not what I say. And you'll know that they're right when they pop into place. And, of course, the last two, or, yeah, I guess the last two should be pretty, pretty simple as there's only two left, one on each side. Go ahead and slam dunk them on there. I had some problems, and I do recommend not using a character with the force. The reason is, is because the same button to insert or pick up is also used the push force, right? And I was knocking things out, and I actually knocked old, uh, I don't know, I guess it was Duke, is what they called him. I knocked old Duke out of there, and it actually glitched on my PS4 run, and I had a heck of a time trying to get that sorted. So definitely don't use a force character if possible. All right, next up, we're going to go ahead and buy a Wookiee cookie and get a Hoth tea. Or I think it's called an, uh, uh, is it just called a Hoth tea? Uh, an ice hot Hoth tea? Something like that. Um, uh, we're going to get the Wookiee cookie over right next to where we just were by the pantomime mission. And it actually costs us 7,500 studs, which might seem like a lot, but it's nothing. In fact, uh, with our 3,500 multiplier on, um, it's actually, it goes really, really fast. Now we're going to run these over. There's an area that has three, actually four characters with a comet balloon above their head. One of them actually has a kyber brick. The other one has the eyes. The one in the middle is actually the one that wants the old Wookiee cookie. And he happens to have a piece of cake on his table. We're going to swoop that and move it over to the far left person because they're actually looking for some cake. Now on our way over with the Wookiee cookie, you probably noticed we ran right by the Hoth tea. And there you go. We've actually got it. We're going to bring it back and slam it right on Buddy's table here. And normally you'd want to talk to Buddy with the kyber brick above his head. But in this case, it is not needed because we got it done dead. Be sure to collect that kyber brick before moving on. As I've noticed, some of the later or more recent missions for us have not actually rewarded us when we don't actually run through the brick. So you can see there we got a new mission unlocked. Lock, lock. That's right. It says in the Forbidden Valley, we've got a new mission. So that's good to go. That's good to go. All right. Right behind us, there is a couple of grapple points that lead us to the top of the tower. Or in this case, the tower top. huh? And once we get up there, all you got to do is just grapple and grab. And we'll go ahead and collect that cabra brick. Thank you very much. Look at that. So just like that, we already got four of them collected. We got a couple more. And then we're going to jump into a double whammy where we get a character token and a cabra brick. Those are always fun. Usually uh, pretty uh, resourceful or uh, eventful, meaning that you have to do quite a bit of stuff, but not always. All right, this next one is ultra buggy. I don't want to say glitchy, but it's buggy. It, it's definitely got some problems. I ran into this same issue on both the PS4 and the PS5, so I'm feeling like this might be something you run into as well. All right, basically this robot host or droid host tells us, uh, he gives us a tip. He tells us basically sort of a... Uh, a bio of a particular gonk droid, and we got to pick out which one. And so he said sassy, right? So we need to pick the sassy one, which happens to be the light blue. We're going to go ahead and control him by using a protocol droid on the machine there, or on the terminal there, which then will allow us to sort of um, overtake him and park him up there. So basically we're just uh, making him walk down the catwalk. He needs to shake his little gonk tush on the catwalk. <laughs> That's right. Next one is going to be Moody. So it turns out to be the uh, black one here. But as you can see, what the crap? It's not working. So I walk him all over the place, and it's just not doing anything. So I go talk to him again, and I'm like, wait a minute. He does say Moody. I selected Moody. But again, it didn't recognize that I had the Moody gonk. So... Uh, of course, I could have edited all of this out and just made mention of it, but I wanted you guys to see it firsthand because this is likely something that's going to happen to you. may not necessarily happen with the same gonk droid, but it could happen, and I just wanted everybody to feel like, you know, <laughs> I basically just didn't want to feel left out and be all alone. No, ho hopefully it won't happen to you guys, but as it happened on both the PS4 and PS5 versions, I thought it was worth mentioning. All right, last but not least, we need the energetic, and you can basically, uh, I mean, it basically gives you which one you need by telling you the, the type of gonk it is, and you just got to pay attention, right? So not often do I uh, watch and listen to what they have to say, but in this case, I uh, definitely had to. Now, this last part, too, is a little bit wonkadoo. They, uh, they actually don't pick a winner, and it requires us to do that. So what I recommend is switching to a character with the foals. And then we're going to go ahead and lift up a droid. 
And in this case, we're going to put the red one up in there. I actually did it for both my PS4 and PS5. I don't know if there's a wrong answer. I think you just get to pick one and it's good. But I felt the red was drop dead gunkjus. <laughs> Pretty fun wordplay there, huh? Pretty fun wordplay. All right. Next up, we've got ourselves another cap -a brick. This one's up behind us here. We've got ourselves... A little rumor spreader up top here, so we're going to follow this up and around inside this cave here. Ooh, it's a rave. Let's go. We're actually going to hop up on the far right side, and it wants you to arrange these things in a way that uh, the power can flow to all the headphones, basically. Now, fun fact for you. As I mentioned earlier, using a character with the force can often ruin something you're trying to do because of the push force availability. Now, in this case, it did happen. If you notice, I was actually trying to push the second one, but the force push pushed the first one, so I have to reroute this one. But basically, here's what you want. You want one, four, two, two. So from left to right, one, four, two, two. You don't even have to mess. Don't pay attention to anything other than just the number that it's put on. So one, four, two, two. And that should make everybody in the room dance. It should drop a kyber brick. That's right. Just like the bass drops, we've got a kyber brick that drops. Kyber brick. All right, we're out of here. We're actually going to hop on a taxi. What? You need a taxi? Just ask me. We're going to go ahead and hop on here and take off from the Forbidden Valley and make our way over into the Pasana Plains. What you can see here, they've split up the collectibles into both areas, and we've got a handful of stuffs. In fact, both of our ship tokens are over there, and two of the three character tokens are over here. And as I mentioned earlier, we're about ready to take on a double whammy, but not before taking in a rumor. You know, I love to hear me some rumors. What you got for us? What you got for it? Ooh, it's a glowing brick up top. We'll get that one in a hot second. Next up, though, after I get spun around here and go the wrong way, I'm going to go ahead and step up to Buddy here, and we're going to work on sifting on Pasana Knights. That's right. This is going to unlock the Stormtrooper First Order Driver character token, which is the first one we found in the area, but it's also going to give us Kyber Brick number seven, so it should be noted that you get a double whammy here. And if you're using the quick links, you might have noticed they're both the same time, same name. No, that's not a mistake. I actually did that on purpose, but sifting through Pasana Nights. All right, we got to go gather some, I, I want to say Vaporator, but they call it v v v I, don't, I can't even say it like they do. V v v v v vaporator? <laughs> they say it in such a weird way. Anyways, moving along, we'll go ahead and land on Twanel Village, which was our first. This was the first free roam area we covered. This one was uh, pretty simple and uh, to the point. No requirements or other planet hopping required. So we actually took this one first. And now we're back for some Vaporator. <laughs> I can't even say it. Like, I want to say Vaporator, right? Like, that's what it, but no. And uh, essentially, you talk to Buddy in the hot circle or the yellow zone. That's right. Normally, the yellow zone is for parking. Uh, but in this case, we're going to actually find some stuffs. And in the back, in the middle, there you can see on the map, we go ahead and show you real quick. But, uh, yeah, so quick quick pickup. You just got to smash the boxes and collect the things that pop up. Next, we're heading to the Junglin Wastes. We were just here last. So uh, kind of a little blast from the past here as we're visiting some already done did places. That's all right, though. You know, a lot of this stuff is uh, intentional, right? So... The quest we're doing now likely wasn't available until we wrapped up stuff on the Jundlin Wastes as well as Tuano Village, right? So that's kind of fun to think about it like that. As soon as we land, though, we're going to head off to the kind of the northeast from where we start. And uh, basically, he tells us there's plenty of those things around here. And I, I looked around on my PS4 for a minute before I realized that they're actually part of these weird antennas, we'll call them. And so we'll go ahead and smash these guys down. I basically just blast them and smash them until you get three of them. I do believe the same three are going to reveal. But you can see here on the map where we is. Just giving you a quick peeky roo. Once that's officially collected, we'll go ahead and take off to our final area, which is just a quick jump over to Mose Asley. So not even actually having to planet jump. We just need to take a quick taxi. So, and again, those uh, travel times have been edited down to uh, kind of quickly get through here, just in case you're not following along. Now, I don't know what happens. Every time I get in a ship or a taxi, it, like, seemingly switches characters from my primary to my secondary, and then makes my secondary my primary, and I'm not really sure why it does that. 
Now, you might also notice, too, that as I run around, I'm ultimately trying to collect as many studs that are just freely standing there, as well as using the push force. That's something I've been doing since the early days, and it's only messed me up once where I actually push forced a box that actually had a porg hiding behind it, so I had to redo that. But I've already told you that story. That was quite a few. I think it was Crate. I think it was Crate that we had that issue on. Speaking of Crate, uh, as we talk to our first rumor giver there, he tells us that we got a vendor around the way that has a crate full of parts that we need. So we'll go ahead and pick those up with a couple of couple of studs for the buddy there. And uh, look at that. They puke out. Bleh. And we'll go ahead and collect all three of them. And it's going to ask us, would you like to return? Why, yes, we would. We'll go ahead and hit that button to go ahead and return. And, of course, we'll yeet over all the stuff. And, again, pretty sure I was just Vader and now C-3PO's handing everything over. But I guess maybe he has a larger storage compartment, which, again, I don't want to know where that is. We'll just leave that up for the imagination. All right, so uh, eventually we get the old token here. Yep. When I do make a mistake with our first ship, which, uh, no, it's not coming up yet, but it's coming up soon. Uh, I do make a mistake with that, and uh, ultimately, oh, wait, maybe it is right now. Actually, you know what? It is right now. So I tag this. Okay, so this is a bad tag, first of all. Uh, we're going for the mission Okie Dokie is kind of how it's, I think, pronounced. And really, I tagged a Kyber Brick, which you can see on my screen right now. It's actually telling me to go to the far right or bottom right corner there, and I'm ignoring it like... Like, my wife ignores me when I'm asking for something. <laughs> uh, but anyways, we'll go ahead and uh, take on the ship first, which really just requires a villain character to uh, take out the silver box. And I'm not sure you need to destroy everything else around, but as it turns out, there are some bouncing bricks that you can build up into a grapple plug, and then we'll go ahead and pop that plug with one of our favorite grapplers, old Django. Of course, you got lots of guys that can do it, gals too, in fact, and uh, we'll go ahead and step right up. Now, I get a little too happy here, because like I tagged a brick, so my brain wasn't thinking, hey, you're getting a ship, right? And then I, right now, right now I'm realizing, oh crap, I tagged the wrong thing. So uh, it actually didn't pop up the icon. I had to go source and find and make my own icon. So uh, thanks to the internet for that. But uh, if it looked a little different, that might have been why. Every once in a while that happens where I forget that I'm doing something. Or sometimes the game just doesn't show me. It's not always my fault. But this case, it was definitely user error. Speaking of user error, watch this. I try to grapple ahead. <laughs> Whoopsie. All right. Uh, moving along now, we'll go ahead and hip it to the hoppa all the way to the tapa. Once we get over here, we're actually going to have to make a pretty death-defying jump to a zip line. It's pretty, pretty cheeky. Once we get on that zip, though, it's safe. We're going to go ahead and zip all the way down and booyah kashow. That's right. If you remember, we talked to that rumor giver at the beginning, and he let us know that there was a brick up here, and we just swooped it up. So that one's done dead. And next up, we've got the Glide of Faith. But check this out. We've got kind of a, a, a cheese for you, if you will. We're going to go ahead and target this one, which happens to be right above a door. Did you notice that? Or right next to a door. As it turns out, if you stand in that silver sand for too long, it actually drops you down below into the caverns, which is good and bad. So be careful if you're not trying to do it. And definitely use a... Uh, bounty hunter with a jetpack to jump over the first part. I land what I believe to be right on top of the brick, but it turns out I'm not on it. But it's weird that it's actually glowing through the sand like that. So I got that one. So normally what they want you to do is jump from that other brick across the way. And it's funny. Watch this. I'm going to try to jump to that one. You can tell it's higher than where I'm standing. There's no way I'm going to make that. Right? Right? Now you're all wondering, wait, is he going to make this jump? Is he really going to make it? Oh, get a little crazy with the map there. And I'm off! And... All right, no luck with that one. So we're going to have to find a different route to get to it. But no worries. There's actually a really easy way to do it. We just need a character with the wall run ability, which apparently I forgot how to do that. I almost botched that wall run. And then we're going to follow it up and around. And, of course, it's taking me through. But that's not what we want to do. We actually want to look up to the left. And we're going to find a rock that we can reveal a grapple handle on. So go ahead and smash. And then grapple. And then woo to the who. We're up here. And hopefully you are too. Burrow bounty. So now you're supposed to glide across and get that other one. But that, that's a lot easier to drop down from the middle part, right? Anyways, hopefully you found that easier. We're going to go ahead and jump right back onto the old spine here. That's a, almost a bad jump there, but look at lucky. And we're going to follow the old waypoint marker to our next one, which is a secret sunken sandy silver. That's a lot of silver. 
a lot of S's. Uh, I used to know this girl that said her S's very uh, uniquely. I don't know if it was something uh, she intentionally did or what, but uh, I think that if she were to say that, it would be, uh, <laughs> it would sound very different. Uh, anyways, we'll go ahead and bust open the old chest there with your favorite thermal detonator, Tossin Pal, which for us it happened to be a fan in disguise. And next up, we're going to go ahead and target the rise of the Kyber Swiper. This one is one of my least favorite ones of this area. And the reason being is, is because there's kind of a, uh, there's kind of a two-parter here. First of all, he has unlimited ninja smoke bombs. And that not only knock you backwards, but they also hurt you a little bit and definitely slow you down. So that's not fun. And he, like I said, he has unlimited. So um, definitely made a run to Costco to get a bunch of those before <laughs> he knew he had to deal with us. Uh, the second thing that I have a problem with, or that I'm not fond of, we'll say, is that this character, and all these kind of running missions, they have this cooldown where you can't just, like, pin him in a corner and deplete his meter. Like, you walk up to him, you say hi, he throws his first ninja bomb, boom, he's out of there, right? Bye. Now, the goal is going to be to try to hit some of these explodey barrels, or maybe grab one with the force and follow him around to yeet it. Now, when you're walking with the force, though, you don't have the speed you do when you don't have something with the force. So I don't know how you're going to catch him. You're just going to have to get lucky. I'm playing a little game of backseat forces here, trying to uh, cut him off, as you can see him running with the kyber brick on your compass. But again, once I finally get up close enough to him... He actually takes some damage, and then I blast him with like three or four more shots, and it doesn't do any damage. Wait, wait for it. Booyaka shot. Look at that. I think it did 300 damage. Is what is that? That's a lot of damage. Um, and, and so here we go. He's got unlimited smoke bombs again. I'm hitting him, but notice like only every like fifth blaster bolt is actually doing damage. Not a huge deal, but just sort of extends this mission longer than I feel it needs to be. Luckily for us, though, it finishes right where the next one is, so that's kind of a bonus. And I think that's scripted to be that way. I think once you get to a certain damage point, he actually runs back and, and finishes the mission here. Now, the next one is called Very Vexing. There happens to be a cage with a kyber brick in it here, but how on earth will we open it? Actually, we're just going to turn around from it, use a grapple character to kind of jump up and over that little... It's kind of hard. you got to need... I'm probably going to need a bounty hunter to boost up over with a jetpack. Maybe not. Uh, but go ahead and flip the switch at the top, and booyah kashow. It opens right up, and it's not so vexing anymore. It's just sort of vexing, not very vexing. All right, next up, we're going to leave the caves as we are done in there, at least uh, for now. I do believe I fall down there later, but I think I edited that out. Now, this next one is, uh, there's a couple of other easy ones, and they're definitely scavenger-based. So you're going to have to pull out your favorite scavenger here in a second. There's actually a bouncing, uh, I, I don't know what it is. It's like an awning of sorts. And you could, of course, jump on that and try to get your bounce on. Now, I have a jetpack on my back, so I'm not able to get as high as some characters can. But guess what? I'm not worried about it. we got a plan B for you. There's actually a secondary route. Happens to be on the side over here where we got some grapple handles. Woo to the hoo! So go ahead and zip all the way up to the top, and as mentioned a second ago, we're going to need a scavenger character and a little help from a glider. So we'll pull that bad boy out and get our zoom -a zoom zoom out there. Woo to the hoo! Soaring over the sands is officially ours. Now over on the left-hand side, you might have noticed that I looked at another kyber brick over here that's going to require the help of a net launcher. And we're going to go ahead and target that guy now. This one's called Hidden in Plain Sight? Is that right? I feel like that might be, I might have to go back and fix that. We'll find out here in a hot second when I get to the top. Hidden in plain sight? Nope. I thought maybe I had not updated the text as uh, usually I, I don't know, I, I have ways that I sort of use the previous level uh, for editing purposes so I don't have to retype everything every time. And uh, usually it works out for me, but every once in a while I forget one. And speaking of forgetting one, I make a pretty big mistake right here. So I talked to Buddy and I should have kept walking. There is actually a box that needs to be destroyed for the next task that we do um and in fact I, I might even be able to see it here in a second it's over to the right it's, see where that white rock is on the ground right there and there's that little walkway that path that goes over there there is actually a black and red box that needs to be taken out over there so feel free to swoop it now it'll save you from having to jump back through here uh, but meanwhile, we're going to go ahead and use a character with the fools to go ahead and pick up both of these twirly poles that have been knocked off of their blocks. We'll go ahead and put them right back into place. That's right. Plug it in, plug it in. 
All right, we'll go ahead and double jump, triple jump all the way to the end here. And woot, I got lucky. I almost fell in the sand. Quicksand, that is. All right, and over here, I actually target the ship, and then I walk up and I destroy the box on sort of accident. I mean, I didn't really mean to, but I, I but I do. I hit the force, thinking it was just. I wasn't thinking. That's that's what happened. So, all right. So then I decided, okay, we're not doing the ship. We're going to do the ten pluggables that are scattered throughout the area. Now, as I mentioned, there is one on the other side of the hippa to the hoppa poles or the twirly poles that we just came from. And I'm sort of doing a good job of showing you where all 10 of them on the map are. But honestly, they're all right here. The only one that might be sort of hard to get is the one that's on the other side. So just make note of that, that nine are on the side with the ship that has the ship token. And one of them is actually on the previous side. So I'm just targeting any and every one and blasting them. As you can see, there are literally nine of them over here. Come on. We shall. Okay, so five are done. Did one's over here hiding off the ledge corner. We'll get this guy. Yep, there you go. Quick peek on the map. There she blows. All right, bye. Or there she goes, I should say. Then, of course, I targeted one way up on the high hillside there and then shot one. <laughs> it was like directly in front of me. So we'll go ahead and take that one out now. Okay, okay. Like I said, I didn't do a great job of this. I, it was sort of unexpected, and I was kind of in panic mode as I was trying to finish this, because ultimately I was trying to get the ship, which the ship just requires you to take out the two stormtroopers and then hack that uh, villain terminal. And then once you get that done, did it, it opens up the door and gives you the ship. Pretty easy biz. However, I messed this up. Now I got to go back. So I've got a, a bounty hunter, and I, you know, it can be done with a bounty hunter making your way back over here. But I find that you actually have better luck with a Jedi based character or somebody like a scavenger who can spin on the twirly poles. You just seem to lock in a little bit better. And although there are grapple points, they're not always where you want. Now, speaking of not always where you want, there's actually a hidden wall that prevents you from not only jumping off to the sides and making your way over to uh, the left or the right, but also there's like the wall that prevents any shots from being blasted through there. So uh, I probably could have cheesed it about halfway through there, but I thought rather than mess up again, so I've already messed up once by not targeting this first of all. And then I messed up again by tagging the ship and then getting this one. And so anyways, moving along, we got the 10th and final one and first ordinance is officially done. Did now we got to go back across. Now, if you're really quick with that, you might've been able to toggle to your secondary character, and he might have still been over on the other side, or I guess they might have been over there. I'm not sure who you had, but we're going to go ahead and spin to win all the way back across. And as mentioned just a second ago, we're going to take out the couple of storm troopers and then, of course, uh, use that terminal to go ahead and open the door and give us the ship, which happens to be Kylo Ren's TIE Whisper. All right. They didn't have any problems with Django. You know why, right? Because he's actually a friend of theirs. They hang out every Saturday and go get pizza and, and uh, I guess, root beer. But, uh, no, I'm just kidding. It's because he was a bad guy, right? Like, he's sort of an ally. They, I don't know if they go get pizza or not. That You'd have to ask them. But All right, us. This one's pretty simple. It was just uh, down, right, down, up. Yours is likely going to be different, but that's okay. Just follow and complete the pattern, and it should open the door. And woo to the who. You lost that sinking feeling. Whoa, that sink. Oh, okay, come on. Come on. Top Gun just came out. Maverick, anyways. Top Gun Maverick just came out. All right, I almost botched that uh, ship token as well. Now, okay, this... Okay, I play a game of musical characters here, and this does not work out for me very well. Uh, really, what I'm trying to do is uh, pick up this protocol droid with the Force. And I keep toggling back over and forth. And, and every time, it's not allowing me to uh, highlight him with the Force aura and then pick him up. It's just splitting him in half. So then I was like, fine, I'll just yeet him up over the top. Then I couldn't even get the toss icon to pop up. So, uh, all right, nailed it first try. All right, I finally get him over there. What we want to do is just pick him up and put him right on top and then toggle over to him while he's up there. Now, of course, there are boxes. You could lift him up on that, stack him up, jump up there. There's a couple of different ways you could get up there. But I do find, even though I was really bad at it, that's probably the easiest way to do it. All right, next up, we've got another character token. It's actually across the way. So one more time, we got to hop across. Womp, womp, womp. This is the last time, though, I promise. Once we get over there, though, we're actually going to uh, protect a guy who is in need of some repairs 
of his, I don't know what kind of ship it is, but um, we actually unlocked the first order jet trooper by doing this. And, and unfortunately, in order to do this, we have to take out a bunch of jet troopers. So if you guys don't remember what the jet trooper is, they're the ones that fly around with the jet packs and have like unlimited flight patterns. And, and anyway, so they're going to be attacking us. There's some guys on the ground too, so... Got a little variety we got to deal with, but we'll go ahead and accept the mission. And again, as per usual with any kind of defense or shooting gallery missions, I always recommend who? You guessed it, a bounty hunter. In this case, we're using Django Fett. Now up on the hillside there, they're going to pop up. Now, as a recommendation, I do recommend taking out the flyers first because they sort of just fly above you and just continuously beam you. The guys on the hillside there, they kind of go back and forth between shooting you, shooting at your secondary character, and shooting at the person we're trying to protect. Now, uh, it should be noted that on the left-hand side, right below the mission name, don't try it on me, there is a health icon or a health meter. Do not let it get depleted. Otherwise, you might have to start this over. I'm sure it can be failed, but luckily for me in both my PS4 Go and my PS5 Go, I had no problems. Look, they were both just locked on to my secondary there. Sorry about that, buddy. Just stand out of the way. All right, so uh, second round, dun, dun, dun. Psych, we had a jet trooper down low. I'm not even sure where he came from. All right, and of course, if the progress isn't progressing, make sure that you look on your compass and look for any red dots and actively try to pursue those as there might be a bad guy floating around still. All right, round three, we got three floaters. And luckily for me, I take the first one down almost instantly, but these other two are a little more problematic. Look at that, see? And it seems like Buddy had a little bit of a cool down or maybe had extra armor and get out of the way. Uh, but uh, not really sure. It was it looked a little wonky though, regardless. All right, and we are in the clear. Come over here, he says. You got to have a quick little chat with him, and then he is out of here. Pretty cool little vehicle. You know, I don't know how what kind of gas mileage it gets. I suppose it could be an EV. I don't know. Don't tread on me. Da -da -dun did. And, of course, we're going to wait hot second to make sure we get that first order jet trooper character token to pop up so we can steal that screenshot and make it into the icon you see down below. All right, next up, we got Kyber Brick 18, Covert Cliffside. This one's actually kind of tucked out over the ledge that you might have missed. So uh, we're going to run over there, avoiding the sand, right? You don't want to get quicksand. It's literally a, a long journey back if you fall down there. you got to come all the way through the tunnels and stuff. Trust me, I had to do it at least once. And luckily for the power of editing, as I was able to remove it. All right, this is kind of a tricky one, too. you just got to fall down onto the ledge and hope that you nail it. I missed it, but I picked up the brick, so we're good to go. And I do believe that actually finishes up the old Pasana Plains over here. So I think we can return to the Forbidden Valley. We'll double check that here in a second. Actually, you know what? I take that back. There is one more. I'm looking at my timeline here. There is definitely one more. So we're going to head back over to the area that's all dark. And uh, basically, we just haven't been to a section of the plains, which is why we thought we were done. So it's pretty simple. It's just up on the cliff side. It's called Mineral Miracle. And I do believe we need to climb up a little bit and then take out a silver box. Is it a silver box or is it just hiding? I think we might just need to shoot a couple of rocks on the ledge. But I uh, get over here. I eventually see the brick. There it is. Woo to the hoo. And it's actually behind me. I ran right by it. Go ahead and jetpack run or climb all the way up the hill. And, yep, it's just in a rock. So go ahead and take it out, collect it, and uh, Mineral Miracle should be yours. Now, that should be it for Pasana Plains. Oh, there is a bluesy over here in this cave, though, just in case you're into the stud collecting. I don't know about you, but got to get them all, got to get them all. As you can see here, I'm trying to get as many as I can. And keep in mind, too, that there is a trophy slash achievement, depending on which platform you're playing on, for getting 10 billion studs. And we are over the halfway mark, but we got a long ways to go. Uh, we're going to actually hold off on purchasing any other items or characters because we got everything we need for now. And I recommend you do the same. So ooh, we're going to take a quick look at the totals. Pasana Plains is done did. So uh, as we get on the old taxi here, it should show us. I think we have like eight or nine more bricks and one character token. Yeah, nine bricks and a character token. So back to the Forbidden Valley we go. So much for being forbidden, huh? <laughs> 
All right, so a quick edit brings us right back. And uh, again, the order in which you do this isn't necessarily relevant, but there are a few out there that actually won't unlock until you complete others. So um, like we did some of the earlier ones uh, intentionally so that the rest of these would be open. Now, this one here, you actually had to do a couple of different things. And it's weird because it's like seemingly a mission, right? That missions normally give you a character token. But this one actually gives you a Kyber brick. It's called the Passan Party Pooper. So we'll go ahead and uh, find the... Oh, there we go. We've got a green comment balloon. Nice little tip here. All right. Just the tip, please. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving along. Moving along. This other one's kind of hiding. you got to run past it. And then turn around, right? Because it's hiding behind this wall. So that might be tricky. Uh, I came out at a funny angle. I apologize for that. But once you get the second tip there, it actually uh, guides us up on this hillside. And you may have wandered around and noticed a giant door with uh, what seemed like a weird lock or something on it. Or maybe an intercom or maybe even like a hatch that somebody could put their face through. I don't know why anybody would want to do something like that. But it is possible. And as we continue to follow our waypoint marker, we get all the way to said door. And now there's a comment balloon on it, which wasn't here prior. So luckily for us, and watch this. He says, fine, I'll show you my face. Oh, he does pop it open and show us his face. Would you look at that? <laughs> luckily for us, too, because we need to use the fools and influence him. So go ahead and press the icon indicated for us. It's triangle. And, uh, and then select which of the three items you want. Simply walk him over to the lever and flip it, which opens the door. And then we got to go inside and have a conversation with him. And I think he tries to take off. I can't remember. Oh, he does. Where do you think you're going, buddy? Oh, that's right. He flies across the festival, and we need to shoot him down. So I'm going to pull out Django because he's got that triple blaster. And the same rules apply as everything else. I uh, kind of in and out of looking down sight, trying to lock onto him as he floats around, uh, trying to lead his path because he's going to like lean to the left or lean to the right. As you can see now, he's sort of lazily pulling the Han Solo to the left right now. And uh, seemingly out of my blaster radius, so I'm going to drop down and get a little closer. And once I get closer, we'll go ahead and depleter that meter. And he drops down and reveals he's got a bunch of stuff that he's stolen from the locals. And they're happy to have it back, so he'll go ahead and... Uh, it's funny, too. I, I don't know if we see it all because I skipped through a lot of this, but they all have like, oh, my lucky ducky. And then he's like, oh, I got a framed picture of the Senate. Wait, this isn't mine. <laughs> like... I think, I think we see it. Oh, it's my necklace. Yeah, there you go. That's not mine. All right. The dismayed dancer is good. And the Passan party pooper is good. All right. So, uh, like I said, we only get a kyber brick for that one. In fact, uh, this next one, though, is our final character token. So, no more tokens after this. Just kyber bricks left. Oh, and this one's pretty simple, too. It's going to require a scavenger character. And it's it's like a race, kind of. Uh, them's catin words. That's right. That's like them's fighting words, right? Pretty fun. Pretty fun wordplay. We're going to go right up to the hillside up behind us here and use our glider to fly across and make our way through a short obstacle course. Now, it's not all gliding, uh, but there is a lot of gliding, and you've got to do a little boinging or bouncing. Is uh, you know, there's definitely some spots that uh, help out with that. So we've got some uh, awnings, if you will, that sort of act like trampolines. And we're going to actually return right back up here because there's another Kyber brick floating. You can see it right there. It's actually floating right above my head on that little stand. We don't go that way, though. By activating this race, uh, we're going to go off to the right. Now, I do recommend pulling out your glider before starting the race just because it actually sucks up some of your time to pull that out. And it is a huge funny angle. Like, I'm not sure why they did that, but they totally twist it and make it look very oddly. Like, the camera just has a weird angle. So float out to the first one. Go ahead and jump and glide out to the third or second one after the jump. And then drop down and get your boing on. Now, I sort of miss the bouncer there, but it's all good, though. And look at that. It's so much time left. So much time left. Uh, you needed to do it in under 30 seconds, I guess. Or... And, and we did. So uh, I think I had 10 seconds left. That's a lot. Now, I tried to toggle back up here and thinking that I would be able to just float right to that other brick. But it turns out in order to collect our character token for them's cat and words, we actually have to talk to Buddy again. So uh, we'll go ahead and run up. And I'm not sure I can say that name. It's uh, 
Is it Nam Nambi Gima? Nambi Gima? I don't know. I'll have to ask Nam how to say that because he might know. <laughs> All right. So uh, right back up to where we just was. As I already pointed out, there was another Kyber Brick that we can glide down to. So run all the way back up there, and we should get our map and our annotation on the screen here any second. But you shall be the kite. All right, I think we can do that. Seems seems doable. We'll go ahead, and you do not have to jump off of the ledge that we started the race on. In fact, there's actually a point that they wanted you to jump off of, and I jumped off in between. Now, the actual glider only gets you to that, so it's pretty close. So make sure that you uh, hold it down the whole way and steer it right towards the brick. Otherwise, you might fall short and have to do that again. All right, earlier we actually ran right under a Kyber brick. Uh, it was actually right after the shooting gallery, right in the very beginning of the video. And uh, I was just so, like, uh, <laughs> focused, hyper-focused on that pantomime one. And uh, anyways, we go ahead and show you a nice little cheesy trick here. You can go ahead and use the jetpack of the bounty hunter to get up on this weird little item and hop up there. Now, if that is gone, if you've smashed it or maybe somehow it's just not there for you, definitely use the force character and the protocol droid character to lift them up and then just toggle once the protocol droid is within that brick. All right, next up, we're going to run all the way up the hill. and We got ourselves another cab of brick. It's called Gleaming Gravel. Follow that waypoint marker. All right, we've been this way, but not quite. We're actually going to take a little bit of a left. That's right. Should have made a left in Albuquerque. And look at that. It's just up here hiding up in. I mean, part of me says this is a kind of a lazy brick. I don't know why some of these bricks are so easily gotten, while some of them are really hard and, uh, like I said, eventful, right? All right, next up, we're going to go in these uh, crevasses of the area. The new place we haven't been to yet. Psych! We actually were here, too. But this time, we're going to take a right. So no Albuquerque in our future. And, you know, okay, so this is pretty simple. You got to have two protocol droids, and you split them both in half. Another way you could do it is you could grab a character with a force, go into town and grab one of those boxes, and walk it all the way up here. I find that to be super long and uh, not very fun. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch my protocol droid uh, into two, right? Split them up, put them on two of the spots, and then toggle over to my secondary character. And once I have that set, I'm going to switch him over to a protocol droid too. However, this is weird. I don't know if this is something that's changed since the update, but watch this. I'm going to actually press the up button, go into my character select, choose a protocol droid, right? Right? We're good so far. Nothing's changed. Nothing's weird. We're going to split them in two. It does sort of a weird toggle -roo, but we'll go ahead and get it all right. All four have been stepped on. Going to turn to make sure that the gate is opening. Going to turn to make sure the cage. Okay, so it's open, right? I'm going to grab it. Now, here's the thing. Watch this. Why do I have three characters now? Is it because the character was split into two, right? And I'm trying to switch back. Now watch what happens. It doesn't switch back. So then I get this guy, and I'm like, all right, let's put you back together. And then I go and I look, and wait a minute. Now I have two C-3PO's and a Vader as my primary character. What is happening? What is happening? Now I'm toggling through, and I can't find Vader, right? So then I actually press the right on the uh, the directional pad, and it takes me. And then the other 3PO goes away. What is happening? Did they fix that? Did they change that? Or is that just some weird fluke that only happened to me? Oh, man, that sort of freaked me out. I was just trying to make a little uh, character switch there, and it was, like, making it way more complicated than it needed to be. All right, so this next brick is called Pinpoint Peaks. It actually has four targets we need to find. And actually, just getting up here is kind of a task, too, if you don't know where these handles are. So I took you on a weird route up here. There's definitely handhelds uh, right below. So if you can make out where the crate is up top, you should be able to see the handhelds to get up here and grab one. All right, the four points. One is sort of behind it to the left. One is sort of below right in front of it. One is sort of above right in front of it. And one of them is on the far, far right. We're going to target that one first just because it's the most likely for us to miss. 
And then we'll just go ahead and do our little trick where we uh, move around without looking down sight. And once we get sort of looking in the general direction of the target, we will hit that trigger button to look down sight, and it'll actually lock right onto it. So, whoop. All right, Pinpoint Peaks is ours. I wonder if that has something to do with, like, Twin Peaks. That was an old show. Remember that Kyle McLaughlin was in? It was good. It was about uh, a missing girl that was believed to be murdered, but there was a lot of, like, weird shenanigans, like supernatural type stuff. I remember I, I made my wife watch that. As a kid, I remember my parents and this huge thing. Everyone was super into it. It was like the best show ever on TV. So as an adult, I was like, hey, babe, did you ever watch this? She was like, nope. So we totally watched it, and we got done with it. She was like, I'll never get those 400 hours back because it's like a really long show. And to be honest with you, it was good for its time, but it like doesn't necessarily stand the same in today's world. So. All right, we got some more grapple points. We got all the way to the top. This is actually welcome to Pasana. We'll go ahead and switch on over to our scavenger, put a glider on our back, and gets to gliding. As we make it across, we can see the brick sitting there. We'll go ahead and swoop it up. Now, to be honest with you, the last couple of bricks we have here are all scavenger-based. So we'll drop down, and you can see there's a wall there that was going to require the breaker blaster. So we'll drop our glider, and look at that, breaking through the bedrock. Pretty appropriate name for a brick. We'll go ahead and target it just to show you. We're literally right by the old uh, spawning point or landing area, if you will. And go ahead and break through. Break on through to the other side. All right, so we got it. And I make a mistake here, and I switch characters like a maroon. We actually need a scavenger character. And I find that the uh, bounty hunter is good as well. So I remembered that I needed the bounty hunter, so I switched to that. But I forgot that I also needed the scavenger. So I get all the way over here. And then I'm like, oh, look at that. I need some netting. All right. So I switch back to Vader, who's way back here chilling. AI being not so I for a moment anyways. Switch on over to a scavenger. Pull out the old net launcher. And we're going to go ahead and drop a couple of nets, maybe. Strike one, strike two. All right. Luckily, we didn't strike out. All right, up we go, and guys, this should be it. We actually are going to get a trophy slash achievement for completing this one. And Like I said, you need a bounty hunter because we need to melt that goo. But get ready for it as we are going to complete the area. Ready? Booyaka Shao Trailing Sectors. And that's for having, uh, what is it, Dakar here, and there's one other one. I can't think of off the top of my head, but if you look at your galaxy map, it'll actually show you us. All right, real quick, I'm going to pull up the totals after I get a bunch of studded here. I was trying to hit $6 billion, but didn't work out. Booyah, Kashao, 28 of 28, 2, 2, and 3 of 3. We are done dead. All right, all right, all right. You guys, next up is going to be Spice. We got Pasana Spice coming soon. Uh, be looking for that uh, at a YouTube app near you. As for me, though, guys, that's going to go ahead and do it. Don't forget to click that like button. Check us out on social media and happythumbsgaming.com as well. But as mentioned, as always, until next time.